Hi everyone. Wow, that's loud. Found the clicker. So my name is Marko Zoric. Uh, I'm originally from Serbia, but I've been living in the UK for 24 years. In those 24 years, I went from working for MTV and doing reality shows to finally sinking my teeth into something a little bit more substantive, which is proper journalism. Um, I work at the BBC, and I work as the BBC News YouTube editor, which basically means that I have two hats on my head every day. One is the BBC, and the other one is YouTube hat. So it's a bit of a challenge when you work at the BBC. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to get to the heart of the issue, and I think the best way to do that is really through food. I love food. I eat a lot of food. I look like I eat a lot of food. So if you look at the main slide, you're going to get a menu. You're going to get a food menu. And hopefully, through the traditional way that we eat, I will give you a little bit of a snapshot of what we're doing at BBC News in terms of YouTube. Um, what do you have on a menu? You have a starter, you have a main meal, and then you have a dessert. And I might have even a doggy bag for you to take home. So the key question is, why is the BBC on YouTube? It's very simple. BBC News is one of the largest news content providers in the world. YouTube is one of the largest video platforms in the world. So that's marriage made in heaven, right? Uh, so when we talk about the size of the BBC, we're talking about 308 million people across television, radio, and online. But as we've heard over the last few hours, the audience is not only occupying those spaces. In 2013, our Director General, Tony Hall, uh, set us a target of 500 million re global reach by 2022. And the question is whether we were ever going to reach that target by simply being online, being on television, and being on radio? And the answer is no. So what are we doing about reaching that target? We're going where the audience is. We're on Facebook. We have multiple pages. Recently, we joined BBC World News and BBC News into one account, and it's now the largest news account on Facebook. 27 million likes. Um, the 27 million followers on Twitter is just two accounts. It's at BBC Breaking and at BBC News. We also have at BBC US News. We have a Russian account. We have multiple languages. And finally, we launched an Instagram account about a year ago, and in then one year, we managed to get 1.5 million followers. But where's YouTube on this? Well, first of all, what is YouTube? If I asked you to describe to me in one sentence what YouTube is, most people will term it, uh, look at it as a platform. And it is, it's a video platform. But for me, it's a search engine. It's a place where people go to voluntarily to search for content. In fact, only 1% of all of our views come from our homepage on YouTube. The way that people get to us is through search. We know that YouTube is owned by Google. So if you look at the slide, it will tell you that YouTube is the second largest search engine just behind Google. Basically, if you do well on YouTube, you're going to come up high in search on Google. So we need to be good at that. Uh, there are 4 billion views on YouTube every single day. YouTube is competing with Facebook. But because I deal with YouTube, I tend to prefer YouTube. Um, we were talking about duration of videos, three second views on Facebook. On YouTube, one view is after 30 seconds. So you need to create content which is going to keep the viewer engaged for those 30 seconds at least. And over half now, it's, I think it's over 52% of views on mobile devices, and everybody's talking about mobile first. In fact, in about a month's time, uh, we will be uh, launching a new service called Newstream uh, on the uh, main page of our website, which is going to be focusing strictly on mobile views. Now, this is a huge opportunity for us, not just in terms of reaching the audience, but it's also about brand awareness. We need to be seen where the audience is. So you can see some of the uh, channels that we have, and I'll dig into more of that, but it's also about advertising. Now, the BBC is not allowed to monetize domestically uh, because of our uh, remit, but we do monetize internationally. And these are some of the ad formats that you will find on YouTube. Um, I know that many people are using our ad blockers, but I can tell you, I can't reveal data, but I can tell you that we are getting some revenue, which at least covers for me, um, from our YouTube activities. Now, the key thing is that we have an existing audience, 
And that audience tends to be a little bit older. So we need to look towards a future audience, the younger people, who tend to be on Snapchat, on Facebook, Instagram. They're on chat apps, Line, WhatsApp, Viber. Um, BBC News is global, so what we decided to do is not to have just one BBC News YouTube channel. Personally, I take care of five. But in total, we have 24 YouTube channels in 20 different languages. These are just some of them. So we have Arabic, Russian, BBC Trending, which is a whole new world of innovative video storytelling, Newsnight, Mundo, it just goes on and on and on. And for each one of those YouTube channels, there's a YouTube manager who focuses on daily curation of that specific channel. Now we go to the main course. This is my favorite part. Um, I would argue that one of the best ways to deliver content which works on YouTube is not by second guessing the audience, but it's to finding out who your audience is and what that audience wants and then cross matching it with what you stand for as a brand. So just because people want, used to like cute cats and cute puppies doesn't mean that you're going to find that on my channel. Um, and you need to make YouTube work for you. So it's a, it's a challenge to do it. Now, as I mentioned, the YouTube audience, our YouTube audience is quite young um, and they don't have a lot of time. By that I mean that they are impatient. So we need to grab their attention in the first five to ten seconds. It means that the way that we edit our videos, like many other organizations do, is that they're front loaded with the most powerful, engaging sounds and videos. And hopefully that will sell the proposition of that specific story. And we're applying this now even in our video formats. Um, we're using innovative content, innovative ways of storytelling, and we're trying our new formats all the time. As I mentioned, BBC Trending is just one of those which has been proved to be very, very successful. Now, if I say to you BBC News, you would expect to see news, surely, right? Now, I tested out breaking news on YouTube, and I didn't really expect to see anything, any significant results, but when you break a news story first on YouTube, the algorithm tends to find it, and then it tends to push it all around. So this is the example of the Nepal earthquake story. To date, 1.5 million views. In this case, the video is quite engaging because you're actually seeing the moment when this happened. But quite frequently, the video is not engaging. And I'll tell you, the first one million view video we had was of the moment when Michael Schumacher was in the skiing accident. What you saw was 20 seconds from the press conference. It is the most boring video you would have ever seen. It got a million views. What you do then is after you publish the first video, you tag along with other videos, which search engine will push to the users. We also have multiple language services, radio output. Now, how do you create video content around that? Well, one of the things we came up with was that there are ways you can do this. So what we do on one of the programs on BBC World Service English is that we invite photographers every Friday. They come to us, we interview them, they tell us about the stories behind the photos, and in return, they give us the photos. So this specific story was about an origami photographer. This guy takes all the pla um, plants for origami. He makes origamis. This is just one of the more recognizable ones, a little Yoda. Everybody likes a bit of wisdom from Mr. Yoda. But we're working on other plants. We're working on formats where we are basically f figuring out how do you get radio content and the stories which are p uh, perfectly powerful in a video style. Now, video innovation is something that everybody is looking into, and most recently, Facebook has been banging on about, about 360 video. YouTube has been on it for about a year, but they haven't been really selling it very loudly, simply because the technology to, to capture it has been pretty expensive, and in order to really experience it fully, technology was ex um, also expensive. Now, you're going to see that the, the price is going down and many more viewers getting engaged with it. This specific one doesn't really, I don't think you can say what it is, but basically we had a producer in Kazakhstan at the launch of our space rocket, and he managed to capture the moment of the rocket going to space, and if you could spin around in a 360 environment, five minutes to go, uh, you would see his son with, a, with a, a natural reaction to his father flying into space. Um, there was a video which we're gonna play, but I think we're gonna run out of, okay, you can play it shortly. I'll tell you what it is in a second. Is there an audio? 
Okay, so I'll tell you what it is. For the, Aus for the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, in order to tell that story, we decided to fly a drone. And we use text and video as well. I think we can pause it here. This is the most viewed video that we have on our YouTube channel. At the moment, it's 7.6 million views. Just because it was the 71st anniversary of the liberation, we got an extra 120,000 views. So it's evergreen content, which really works on YouTube. And mobile first. Um, we're working, we've just started working on Snapchat, and one of the things that we're doing is we're repurposing social video on YouTube. So just because the video was created for Snapchat, we're trying to find a way and trying to see whether it works on a platform like, like YouTube. So this was our producer, Franz Strasser, in, one of the, uh, in Iowa, the caucus, showing people what a caucus looks like. And finally, we have one of the largest news archives in the world. So what we're doing is we're digging into that archive, we're finding the content, and we're trying to edit it in a way which makes sense on YouTube. Dessert time. So what has been the impact? The impact has been amazing. Um, if I was a banker, and if I told you the percentages, I would be getting a big bonus. But we're seeing a 135% increase in the amount of time spent on our channel which is pretty significant because watch time is the number one metric on YouTube. So the more time you can accrue, the more higher you're gonna come in search. Um, we are seeing average eight million views, but that is really an average. It's going up and down, uh, this is per month. And it's now over 150 million views that we have. And then finally, it's a very male dominated audience and it's primarily English speaking. But this is specifically speaking about BBC news. This is not including other languages. And why, finally, uh, what's the conclusion of this? The conclusion is that it's in a way of uh, us extending our reach and um, having brand promotion. It's targeting the younger and future audience. And finally, it is for us a learning mechanism to, to develop our video storytelling. And I told you there was a doggy bag involved. I hope you like a little design. There are four things you need to keep in mind when you're on YouTube. One is you have to stay true to your brand. There's no, there's no point of you trying to do what YouTube requires you to do. You need to do something that you stand for and try to see whether you can find a way of telling it in a YouTube way. You need to be consistent and committed. Just because you publish two or three videos doesn't make it a success necessarily. You need to be consistent over a longer period of time, which is difficult for organizations with smaller budgets. You need to listen to your audience, this is the key. Brands frequently think that they know best, but they very rarely read the comments and try to find out what really engages them. And then finally, don't only imitate. I know the imitation works and we've all done it, but try to innovate, try to find new ways. And that's it, thank you. <laughs>